Namaste. Welcome to the wonderful world of Ayurveda, Yoga and Jyoti with Chago Namaste. Enjoy. So let's recapitulate what we have spoken today. Uh, the first thing is that our mind only suffers if we are attached or if we are averse to a thing. There is no such a thing of uh, happiness or sadness because of the world existing. In our materialist perspective in the West, we are happy if we win the lottery, if we have a, a nice boyfriend, girlfriend, if we have a nice car, and if we have a nice kids, nice house, nice retirement plan, and all this stuff. These are all external features, okay? But the point is that there are a lot of people that live with this perfect uh, outer world, world, and they are not in the proper sensation of being, feeling good, okay? This sensation of being, feeling good is all what we call sukha, okay? And the, the pronunciation is sukha because it is S-U-K-H-A, okay? It's not sukha. Sukha would be S-U-K-A. Here is sukha because as we have spoken before, this ka in this word represents the concept of akasha, the concept of that is usually translated as space or ether, but these are bad translations. The idea of ka here is the mental area that you are living, okay? If you are living in Ubatuba, if you are living in Germany, if you are living in Canada, doesn't matter, okay? The, the point is that the relation of your mind with the uh, space that you're living, this can be the room that you sleep, this can be the city that you work, doesn't matter. It has to be in the proper sensation that you feel comfortable. This sensation of being feeling good, being comfortable with the space that you're living, this mental space that you're living, it's called su -ka. And su here represents the idea of appropriate, okay? Comfortable. It's opposite to du -ka. And du here is everything that it's a little bit hard, uh, like in the word Duryodhana. It's a thing that it's uh, harsh. It's uh, the uh, root of the idea of do. So, uh, when you feel harsh, when you feel discomfort, when you feel um, unable to feel the presence of divine consciousness, this is do. Ka. When you feel the presence of uh, divine consciousness, this is su ka. Okay? So when you um, are in this state of sukha, the prana in your mind, in your manavasirotas, in your uh, nadis, it's flowing in the smooth manner. If the prana is overflowing, it's rajasic. If the prana is flowing in a very um, sluggish form, it's tamasic. If it's flowing in a balanced manner, it's sattvic. And this state of sensation, the sensation of the sattvic movement of prana in the nadis will provoke sukha in the mind. Because mind, according to Ayurveda, is also related to sattva in the sense that what we call mental health is related to this proper flow of pranas in the nadis, okay? But these nadis tend to be uh, disturbed by rajas and tamas. These are the doshas of the mind, okay? And how they are disturbed? They are disturbed by raga. Uh, they are disturbed by uh, mental excitement 
and this mental excitement can be uh, occurred by uh, attachment or aversion. Okay? Attachment to things that we think that it makes us happy and aversion to things that we think that makes us unhappy. These are all ragas. This can be uh, lust, this can be angry, this can be uh, feverishness. It's a state of the mind that you don't feel comfortable with yourself. Okay? And these are provoked by the uh, over or the unpro improper or the uh, hypo utilization of the senses. The main idea here is that when we lo lose, when we get lost about our divine consciousness, our inner peace, our inner connection with God, this will provoke the quest of happiness outside. Because the purpose of life is to feel the sensation of completeness, purna. And when we get lost of this sensation of completeness, we uh, try by material means to restore the sensation of Purna. Okay? In Ayurveda, we have six, six essential functions of life. Pranana, this is kind of being nourished. Jivana, enthusiasm. Uh, Lepana, that are being protected. Snigda, Snehana, to be uh, not emotional, to be with affection, to be lovely. Uh, dharana, loving, thanks. Uh, dharana, to, have, to be with the sensation of being supported and being able to be supportive. And also Purna. These are the six functions of the uh, first six datus. Rasa, Rakta, Mansa, Medha, Asti, Maja. And when all this life is perfect, we can create a new life. In the, it's the function of the Shukradat. But the point is that when we lost our sensation, or, or when we lost our connection with divine consciousness, we try to get this Purna uh, experience from material world. But the material world will not be able to handle you this in an effective manner in a long term. Because the form of the material world will perish. And if it perish, your attachment or your aversion will, be, will bring you to the Dukkha state of mind. Okay? So, uh, the essence of spiritual world, as we are speaking, is about the water, doesn't matter if it's in a drop or if it's in an ocean. It's the essential part of the existence. The material existence, it relates to the form. So it makes a lot of difference if the water is in a drop of water or if it's in an um, ocean form. Okay? There is big difference between the form of the water in a drop or in the ocean, but there is no difference in the sense that suppose they are just the same chemical uh, things uh, of the water in the drop or in the ocean, okay? So moving from materialism to spiritualism is going to the world of forms and appearance to the world of uh, essential living, okay? And the way that we can move from the external, apparental form of living to the internal, apparent, thanks, uh, form of existence is through the sadhana. The spiritual practice enables us to uh, balance the flow of prana through the nadis and be then in sattvic uh, mode of function in the way that we experience the divine connection with existence and this provokes sukha. This provokes, in a sense, that it sprouts naturally. You are not looking for happiness. You're um, practicing your spiritual 
techniques. It can be meditation, it can be mantras, it can be kriyas, it can be um, surfing, doesn't matter. Okay? But the point is, anything that connects you with your internal you. This means that usually in the Vedic culture, this was attained mainly by mantras, meditation, and so on. Right? Asanas, doesn't matter. But if a person playing the violin get this connection, this is his spiritual practice. Okay? In a general sense, it's easier for everyone to connect through these techniques that we call yoga. In the way that if mantra doesn't work so well to you, it has asana. If asana doesn't have so well to you, it has pranayama. It has a lot of different routes to access this uh, internal reality. It's not external truth. You should do this, you should pray, you should meditate, you should uh, do this or that. It's the point that you feel the connection, and this connection is true for you. And when you have this true connection inside, the clear perception that divine consciousness is acting everywhere and everything is originated from divine consciousness, it destroys the illusion of the material concept of ahamkara, of uh, I am doing this, I am doing that, and I am producing, I, I am the agent and I am the producer of the result of the action. Okay? If you are in close connection with your with the internal being, the you that you usually say that it's you, it start it stops to be the form of the uh, drop of the water and starts to be the uh, inner part of the <laughs> drop of the water. This means it's not anymore the form, it's not anymore the prakriti. It's uh, the essence, is the purusha, is the consciousness there, okay? And when this happens, you you start to be able to handle the form just as the form. Ahankara now is just a tool for you to keep your body alive, to uh, have the money to pay your bills, to... Uh, put food in your mouth to keep the body alive, okay? If your hankara is not working well, the body is going to die. But uh, the point is that the hankara has no purpose in itself, in a spiritual sense. This means that if you only live to pay the bills, to put uh, food in your mouth, to have sex and all this stuff, this means that and uh, sukha is not going to be present in your life completely because you are not uh, driving your prana to your inner, to the essential part of the self. Okay? So this means that when we start to do our spiritual practice, we are able, it can be from meditation, mantra, doesn't matter, we are able to... Um, harmonize the flow of prana in the nadis. This will uh, be more clear the sensation of happiness from inside to outside and this will uh, help us to live externally with our, with our hankara, to pay the bills and to have some comfort in life in the sense that we have the time to do our spiritual practice. We have the time to go deep into mantra, meditation, doesn't matter. And we are, each, every day, each day, cleaning our mind from uh, mental impressions that are just like bring the prana outside, just to go out to home, to take the food and come back to home to, to have the lunch. This means we are not any more attached to the external um, movements in the indriyas, in the senses, we are much more driven for the quest of being internalized to our higher or inner, or doesn't matter, 
uh, self or consci higher consciousness, inner consciousness, divine consciousness, anything consciousness. Okay? So the idea of going from materialism to spiritualism is to find sukha in a more broader sense outside the material form, inside the essential form. And the technique, the road for that is what we call sadhana. Okay? Had we have a very good review of what we spoke before? Good. Yes. Om Gam Ganapataye Namaha Sharanam Ganesha